Okay, boys and girls, we have the second part of this problem that I started in class. This is a classic basic citation problem using car suspension, um, or the quarter model. So we have here our gang in the mystery machine going at 50 miles an hour uh, through this kind of wavy terrain. Now the road profile has got, has got this uh, this kind of uh, amplitude, uh, this motion right here. So 0.03 sine omega t. So notice that 0.03 is in feet, right? It, it tells you in feet. So that's a, you know, 3% of a foot. That's really like a third of an inch. So just keep that in perspective. This ground is really not that wavy. It's, uh, you know, 0.03. That's just a third of an inch, basically. And the period of that thing is uh, 20 feet, so it's every 20 feet it kind of repeats itself. So we're going to treat it as a perfect sinusoid, so harmonic force, uh, harmonic displacement input. Uh, so for this second example, we have a, a bigger mass, almost one and a half kilograms. That's for the entire vehicle. Uh, actually, sorry, 1,500 kilograms. Uh, big spring constant, um, damping coefficient. We got to find the steady state motion amplitude. So just an amplitude, that's the magnitude x. And then the force transmitted to the chassis. We're going to assume they're asking us for just an amplitude, though, um, you know, you could have just as well asked for a force function as a function of time. But we'll just do the amplitude. Once you know one, you know the other. It's really easy. Uh, okay, so let's make some room here. So the first thing we need to find is, um, you know, to, we basically want to get into that equation where we're going to need, we're going to need zeta, and we're going to need R, but in order to know R, we need the natural frequency, and we know that we need to know the forcing frequency. So right now, you know, we know we, we basically need this omega right here, uh, but that's not given. What we have instead is we have a period of an oscillation, and then we have the speed of the vehicle. So we should be able to get radian frequency from that. So what I would do is I would say, okay, well, uh, omega... It's going to be, let's start with what we know. We know the speed is 50 miles an hour. Just a good old uh, unit conversion right here. Um, and I'm just going to keep multiplying by times 1. So I know there's uh, 5,280 feet to a mile. Um, okay, get rid of the miles here. Then I know based on what's given here that it's going to be... Um, one cycle every 20 feet, right? So one cycle every 20 feet. So I can cross out the feet. Then I, I know I have 2 pi radians per every cycle. Okay, so it's pretty obvious. I'm trying to get to radians per second here. So I'm radians per hour right now. So I need to convert hours to seconds. So I know I have... Um, one hour equivalent to 3,600 seconds. All right. So I got now radians per second. So when you do it all out, you're going to get uh, omega of 23.04 radians per second. Goody. Okay, so the next thing we need is uh, zeta. So zeta is going to be obviously c over 2 square root of km um, and let's see we have some values here so it's 5300 newton second meter divided by 2 times the square root of in k is a big number here it's uh, 2.9 times 10 to the 4 times and my mass is by the way you know I'm gonna do this on the side but uh um, the mass for this particular one was 1450 kilograms, so I really need the quarter of that mass, right, because it's a quarter mass model, so quarter mass is equal to, divide that by 4, you're going to get 362.5 kg. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that right in here, 362.5. All right, so my zeta ends up being... Uh, 0 0.82, just under damped, but pretty damped. All right, um, what else do we need? Uh, we need a natural frequency, natu natural frequency, that's uh, square root of k 
over m. You know, I assume at this point my mass is always going to be my quarter mass, right? That's what I'm focusing on. So 2.9 times 10 to the fourth divided by 362.5. So I have a natural frequency of 8.94 radians per second. Okay, the next thing we need is that R, the frequency ratio. I'm running out of page here. So R is omega over omega n. So that's going to be 23.04 divided by 8.94. Okay, so we have R is equal to 2.58. And by the way, that value of R tells you basically how far away from the from the natural frequency you're, be, you're driving this thing. So at a R of 1, it means we're driving it at resonance, basically, at the natural frequency. So we're uh, somewhat away from that right now. Okay, so um, then we can apply this formula. So x over y, which is the uh, displacement transmissibility. Um, it's going to be, I'll just write it out real quick. So it's a 4 zeta squared r squared plus 1 divided by quantity... Um, 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 zeta squared r squared. No, 4 zeta squared r squared. Uh, let, me just, let me just fix that real quick. All right, 4 zeta squared r squared. Okay, so I'm going to plug all that stuff in. Oh, this is going to be a big one. All right, so 4 times 0 0.82 squared times 2.58 squared plus 1 over, uh, what do we got? I meant to just do 1. <laughs> 1 minus, what's my r? 2.58 squared squared plus 4, 0 0.82 squared, 2.58. Eight squared, and this is where you're more likely to make a mistake. You got to plug plug the sucker into the calculator, and just you got to be very good at that kind of thing. So, uh, just uh, it's up to you to become good at using a calculator. Um, all right, so my transmissibility is going to be. Um, oh, what did I get? I wrote it down over here. Okay, yep. Yeah, um, Zero point six one five. Six one five. And that's basically the ratio of output to input. So um, that, that's good. That means that the chassis of this car is going to displace a little bit less than what the road displaces. Um, let's, before we can find x, we need to know what y is. y is given as 0 0.03 feet. But I'm working with kilograms here. I'm trying to get newtons eventually. So I'm going to convert this to uh, meters. So we have, it turns out, Every one meter has 3.28 feet. And so basically in meters, our input displacement of the road, it's very small. It's um, 0 0.00, nope, 0 0.005, oh, no, no, 0.009, right, meters. And that's very small. That's like 9 millimeters. That's how little the road is displacing. So basically, x is now um, 0 0.615. That's my ratio that I just found earlier. Multiplied now by my input uh, function, or my input displacement, which is 0 0.009. So now I have that x is equal to um, 0 0.0056, which is actually 5.6 millimeters. That's a nice way to write the answer right there. I'm going to end up needing a new page here. Um, okay, so here's what we have. And so finally, the force transmissibility, F of T, is simply just plugging in um, R squared K times X, which ends up being, you know, my R is 2.58 squared. K is, oh, somewhere in there, 2.9 times 10 to the fourth times 0.0056 is what we just found for x. So my transmitted force is uh, 1,083 newtons. Nice. 
So that's actually quite a bit of force. That's uh, close to about 225 pounds. Yeah, I don't know how realistic these numbers are, like the spring constant and all that. Um, but this is a very small displacement, um, uh, 9 millimeter amplitude of the road profile. But if you're going fast enough, that's going to turn into a big force of about 250 pounds going up through the shocks to the chassis of the car. Um, all right, I think that's it for this example problem. Uh, it's burrito time. Mm -hmm.